So I'm Matt Nelson, and I teach in the politics department at the School of Oriental and African Studies in London, uh, SOAS. And most of my work focuses on religion and politics in South Asia. So one of the ways, one of the things that links um, the constitution of Pakistan to the future prospects for, for democracy in Pakistan, and I think this has been mentioned by many people, is the role of fundamental rights. Um, and one of the areas within fundamental rights that I'm particularly interested in lately is freedom of religion and freedom of expression. So how public discourse about religion um, takes shape in, in Pakistan. What's interesting about fundamental rights in this area, I think, is that even international standards, uh, which Pakistan also uh, resembles in its constitutional language, recognize freedom of religion subject to public order. And the relationship between, on the one hand, a freedom, and on the other hand, the qualification of that freedom, I think is very interesting. Now, now in the past, when um, there was controversial speech, or there was controversial religious practices, and people were very upset about that and, and used violence against that speaker or that person, um, the, the problem of, of violence was associated with the person who used violence against that speaker or against that um, that person. But lately we've seen this change in the relationship between the fundamental right and, and this notion of public order. Nowadays, it seems like the burden with reference to violence is, is shifting so that the person who speaks or the religious practitioner is regarded as a provocateur. A provocateur, in other words, their speech or their religious practice is itself regarded as a form of provocation, a form of, of violence, um, one that we should not blame those who then use violence for. In fact, they are said to have initiated the, this problem. And I think that's a, a very troubling uh, trend in our understanding of the relationship between a fundamental right and, and public order. And, and in Pakistan, um, the language of the Constitution is um, familiar to people who look at international standards concerning fundamental rights, religious freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Um, but the way in which that, per, that familiar language ha, has been understood uh, has changed. So that now it's the vigilante who attacks is not necessarily to blame. It's the provocateur who invites the attack in the first place that, that is to blame. And that's a very troubling trend um, for the way we understand fundamental rights in, in Pakistan. So what I'm hoping is that when we link the Constitution to the prospect for democracy in, in Pakistan, we focus on you know, the way that language in the Constitution was first understood um, as protecting those people who have somewhat controversial speech or somewhat controversial forms of religious practice so that we can preserve the vitality, the diversity, the humanity of, of our communities um, which, of course, we, we find in great abundance and great liveliness in, in Pakistan as well. Um, and preserving that um, against the, the press towards a, an overwhelming homogenization, um, I think, is very, very important. And Pakistan's constitution allows us to do that, and that's democratic.